Hello students, in our previous lecture of pre uh, praise of folly, we had seen the message conveyed by Erasmus are so effective because of the structure and the style in which he writes his book. Praise of folly begins with folly cheerfully speaking to her audience as if they were sitting in front of her. She delivers speech and as soon as her audience sees her as a carefree, light-hearted and of course foolish, foolish, Erasmus begins to assert his various notions about humankind. All the while, he is hiding behind the defense that it is folly, not he who is uh, speaking. And at times, um, he becomes sacrilegious, uh, sacrilegious in uh, his commentary, but he is or he has hidden himself behind the folly. Besides, in this part, we are going to see that apart from uh, setting the tone, the author also uses multiple sections to categorize his ideas. Here, we find that the first part introduces folly. The, uh, seconds, the second part speaks about her power and influence. The third section that regarding Folly's many followers demonstrate a noticeable change in, uh, change in Folly's voice and attitude. So early in the novel, Folly jokes about Pan's hopeless effort at singing. But in the later half of the book, she meticulously criticizes old women who can scarcely carry their weight of years but still go around searing their face or the faces with makeup and exposing their shagging withered breast. So the seriousness of folly or folly's tone prepares the readers for the latest sections which contains folly's uh, brutally honest views on Christian fools. Erasmus refers to specific examples to discredit the Roman church skillfully using satire to make his points in an entertaining fashion. For instance, Erasmus uses satire to end the book optimistically even after he berates the clergy. He calls Christians the biggest fool of all uh, biggest fools of all for they ignore insults, make no distinction between friends and enemies, sustain themselves on vigil to uh, toil, humiliations, and all the while they direct off their endeavors towards God. Using this paradoxical twist, Erasmus, Erasmus praises true Christians as generous, good, and strong will, will in their faith. Now, the myriads of ideas in Praise of Folly work together to convey the mindset of Renaissance. One of the most noticeable things about the book is its constant reference to the great thinkers of the ancient world. This is very distinguishable characteristics of the Renaissance. Uh, Renaissance. Humanism, which encouraged development of education and culture through the learning and application of classical models. Even Erasmus feels that um, rhetoricians of day fancy themselves practically gods on earth if they can work together a few Greek works into their Latin speeches, however, out of place they are. Now, here Attention to classical scholar is evident in, his, uh, in this book, of which a single page contains reference or references of more than five authors or philosophers of ancient Greece. The importance of education is also a recurring idea in the novel, in particular when Erasmus sarcastically states that those who are the happiest in life are those which have least to do with probing the secrets of nature measuring the stars, calculating their movement and influence, and seeking the hidden causes of the universe. So, during the Middle Ages, the clergy was educated, but the peasants and the middle class were not at all concerned with learning. Contrary to this, the Renaissance was a time when rece receiving a good education was very important or considered important. Erasmus, in particular, felt that men and women should strive to acquire knowledge, and he also recognized that the lower class should also be able to read the word of God just as well as the upper class. So this kind of emphasis on the importance of education can be seen as the pursuit of excellence which was also a trait of Renaissance era. So apart from uh, its emphasis on education, praise of folly is significant for its questioning of the Catholic Church and here starting from the very first page, Folly seeks to make her readers question their ideas, their actions and their faith. She targets the corruption of the church officials 
and the misinterpretations of both religious texts and practices. Her questions regarding the church foreshadows its decline as well as the outpour of religious ideas during the reformation. So, this analysis of the church acted as a precursor to Martin Luther's idea which took Europe by storm years after the book was written. Today, centuries after its publication, we can say Praise of Folly is recognized not necessarily as a literary masterpiece, but as a remarkable analysis of the many ideas born during the Renaissance. The multiple topic in the book reflect the growing influence of humanism, religious questioning and pursuit of excellence. Erasmus, uh, we can say Erasmus's radical ideas and harsh criticism of the church resounded with many individuals. And it is often said that in terms of reformation, he laid the egg that later or uh, Luther has later. Now, and although Foley's uh, commentaries on every aspect of life are at times confusing and difficult to interpret, people continue to be fascinated by the insight that she gives. At the conclusion of her speech, uh, Foley says, I hate an audience which won't forget. But her audience wonder if she knows how to forget, uh, how unforgetful her words truly are. So, to sum up, we can say, or it can be said that uh, praise of folly is uh, first folly is great because of her ancestry and birth, because she is the child of youth and Plutus, the greatest of all gods. Second, folly is great because of her birthplace and early upbringing. We can say because she was born in the fortunate isles and nursed by drunkenness and ignorance. Third, folly is great because of her distinguished attendance. Her attendance include drunkenness, ignorance, self-love, flattery, forgetfulness, laziness, pleasure, madness, wantonness, intemperance, uh, intemperance and sleep. Fourth, she has great power over humanity. Happiness depends on her. Men find it in women who are fools. Friendship, marriage, need folly to survive. Fifth, all great action depend on folly and her companions, which is that war, civil society and the arts are all founded on foolishness. Sixth, folly gives true prudence. Real prudence is rash behavior and requires buying into the worst com comedy that is playing the part you are given. Seventh, folly brings true wisdom. Because without folly, wisdom would lead to suicide. Life would be unbearable, old age un intolerable and shame overwhelming. 8. To be foolish is to be very happy because men are by nature fools. Knowledge of science does not increase happiness. Undisciplined animals are the happiest animals. Fools are the happiest of men. 9. To be mad or deluded con, is not necessarily bad because there are many kinds of madness, some harmless and pleasurable. Self-love pleases all. And flattery also is an admirable form of delusion. It is, we can say, kindness with good effects. The really sad thing is not to be deceived. Tenth, folly is greater than all the other gods. Because worshipped in all places, men are her living temples. People, have uh, people may worship the images of virgins and the saints, but they imitate folly in her teaching. 11. All people are followers of folly because the wise are included among her devotees, including grammarians, poets, rhetoricians, uh, authors, lawyers, logicians, sophists or scholars, scientists, theologians, monks, kings, courtiers, bishops, cardinals, popes and priests. 12. To be foolish is to be fortunate according to folly because the classics and the proverbs speak of this. It is not any easier for a wise man to become wealthy than a fool. Foolish men are more attractive to women. Truly wise men shun fortune and money. 13. Point, great authorities exalt or are praised by folly. Folly is praised by the proverbs, philosophers and sacred writers. Jesus also speaks of his foolishness and Christ favors the foolish of the, uh, foolish of the world. We know that wisdom was not intended for men because the tree of knowledge was forbidden. 14. Christianity is fo folly. The church, according to folly, is full of fools. Its founders were enemies of learning. 
jealous uh, Christians are notorious fools. Uh, the ultimate happiness sought by a Christian is a kind of madness and in conclusion we can say that folly makes no summary because she forgets what she had just said and those devoted to folly should continue doing as they have done in the past. This is all for today's analysis. Thank you all.